This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Seth Woodworth. Thus Spake Zarathustra by Frederick Nietzsche. Translated by Thomas Common. Part 1, Chapter 1. The Three Metamorphoses. Three metamorphoses of the spirit do I designate to you. How the spirit becometh a camel, the camel a lion, and the lion at last a child. Many heavy things are there for the spirit, the strong load-bearing spirit in which reverence dwelleth. For the heavy and the heaviest longeth his strength. What is heavy? So asketh the load-bearing spirit, then kneeleth it down like the camel and wanteth to be well laden. What is the heaviest thing, ye heroes? Asketh the load-bearing spirit, that I might take it upon me and rejoice in my strength. Is it not this, to humiliate oneself in order to mortify one's pride, to exhibit one's folly in order to mock at one's wisdom? Or is it this, to desert our cause when it celebrateth its triumph? to ascend high mountains to tempt the tempter? Or is it this, to feed on the acorns and grass of knowledge, and for the sake of truth to suffer hunger of soul? Or is it this, to be sick and dismiss comforters, and make friends of the deaf, who never hear thy requests? Or is it this, to go into foul water when it is the water of truth, not disclaim cold frogs and hot toads? Or is it this, to love those who despise us, and give one's hand to the phantom when it is going to frighten us. All these heaviest things the load-bearing spirit taketh upon itself, and like the camel, which, when laden, hasteneth into the wilderness, so hasteneth the spirit into its wilderness. But in the loneliest wilderness happeneth the second metamorphosis. Here the spirit becometh a lion, Freedom will capture it and lord trip in its own wilderness. Its last lord it here seeketh. Hostile will it be to him, and to last God, for victory will struggle with the great dragon. What is the great dragon which a spirit is no longer inclined to call lord and god? Thou shalt, is the great dragon called. But the spirit of the lion saith, I will. Thou shalt lieth in its path, sparkling with gold. A scale-covered beast, and on every scale glittereth golden thou shalt. The values of a thousand years glitter on those scales, and thus speaketh the mightiest of all dragons. All the values of things glitter on me. All values have already been created, and all created values do I represent. Verily there shall be no I will any more, thus speaketh the dragon. My brethren, Wherefore is the need of the lion in the spirit? Why sufficeth not the beast of burden, which renounceth and is reverent, to create new values that even the lion cannot yet accomplish, but to create itself freedom for new creating, that can the might of the lion do? To create itself freedom and give a holy nay even unto duty, for that, my brethren, there is need of a lion. To assume the right to new values, that is the most formidable assumption for load-bearing and reverent spirit. Verily into such a spirit it is praying, and the work of a beast of prey. As its holiest it once loved thou shalt, and now it is forced to find illusion and arbitrariness even in the holiest things, that may capture freedom from its love. The lion is needeth for this capture. But tell me, my brethren, what the child can do which even the lion could not do. Why hath the praying lion still to become a child? Innocence is the child, and forgetfulness. A new beginning, a game, a self-rolling wheel, a first movement, a holy yea. Aye, for the game of creating, my brethren, there is needed a holy yea unto life. Its own will willeth now the spirit, his own world winneth the world's outcast. Three metamorphoses of the spirit have I designated to you. How the spirit became a camel, the camel a lion, and the lion at last a child. Thus spake Zarathustra, 
and at the time he abode in a town which is called the Pied Cow. End of chapter 1